welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review style video on the episodes of The Haunting of Hill House. So I'm going to just get straight in with episode one, Stephen Sees a Ghost. So when you first get into The Haunting of Hill House, you obviously hear the dialogue at the very start and you get a very good look at the outside and the inside of Hill House. Um, I would say that the decor is very dated, which does give that added spooky appeal, which I really, really like. Um, if you've ever stayed in like a really old fashioned hotel or you've gone to a museum that has um, like rooms set up in like a dated uh, decor period style, you know, that kind of thing they're normally quite dark and you do you know even though you know it's just a room that's set up for that you do get quite like oh okay you know it's a bit it's not how you would want it decorated and it does give off that very spooky appeal so yeah um quite quickly we are introduced to uh nelly and her nightmarish dreams of the bent neck lady i mean God, I mean, I had some creepy dreams as a kid, but that just, she just takes, takes it home for that. I mean, and at that age, like, to see something like that, I mean, oh, God, no. Really, really just very creepy, but also, um, kind of flipping it on its head, you also then are introduced to the connection that Luke and Nell have. Um, I'm not quite sure if we know that they're twins yet, but, um definitely a connection going on there. Um, we are also <laughs> quickly introduced to the fact that Shirley talks in her sleep and I do love this scene because you know Hugh's just obviously settled Nelly and Luke, um, he's checked that the bent neck lady's gone, Stephen's you know done his big brother thing by checking in on Nelly and he's now gone back to his bed. Uh, I think Theo's probably already shut the door and gone back to sleep but um, Shirley's door is open so once Hugh has you know shut the door on Nellie and uh, Luke's room she kind of he checks in sorry on Shirl um and he kind of says to her like Shirl you're talking in your sleep again and then Shirley kind of replies with the fact that pandas don't like macaroni and then I do love the fact that when Hugh goes back to bed he gets himself settled and then Olivia's like oh is everybody alive and he was like, yeah, Cheryl's talking in her sleep again. And I do love the fact that instead of just dismissing it, like a co like parents have done in previous films that I've watched, they're just like, oh God, you know, whatever. Um, Olivia actually is quite um, invested in her kids in that respect because she asks Hugh, she says, oh, you know, what, Shirley, you talking about anything good? And Hugh replies that uh, obviously pandas don't like macaroni. And you know, instead of again dismissing it, Olivia just kind of chuckles to herself. And I like that, I really do. I think it's just, you kind of get her, you find out what type of person she is quite early on in the season. And I just think it's really, really good. So then we're introduced to adult Stephen. And Stephen actually turns out to be a writer. And he wrote the book The Haunting of Hill House and he has gone on to write other books and is now writing another one which is based off of other people's stories and um, what they think happened and everything else like that. So I am not shocked that Stephen turned out to be a writer but at the same time I didn't really think he would write a book based off the stuff that happened to him and his family because when he was so young like he was really really young when all that happened but yet he still thought that he would write a book about it um and then other books which I think have the same style of genre so to speak um but yeah so that sort of surprises me and doesn't at the same time um, but I do find that Stephen does try to rationalise everything, like, even when he was a kid, and also when, well, much more when he's an adult, like, anything that happens, or any 
you know, little um, reminder of his childhood and of Hill House and he just flat out just rationalises everything. He doesn't want to even begin to believe that the stuff that his siblings said they saw, anything that their dad says um, could even possibly be real because there's just no way that, you know, no way that that could even possibly be real. So, yeah, so again doesn't really surprise me but it does at the same time so yeah um then we um also hear again just going back to Stephen sorry um that he he says that he's never seen a ghost in Hill House but yet the title of this episode is called Stephen Sees a Ghost so it is quite um <sighs> I don't know, it's, it's, it's almost like I said, like, he's just like, nope, rationalised it, got to have been something else, trick of light, I was scared, you know, there was a storm, you know, something going on, so yeah. We quickly then go and see um, an adult, Shirley, and we find out that Shirley works in a funeral home. So I was quite shocked at this, because um, I didn't think that that would be a job that Shirley would do as an adult. Um, I mean, you know... You can you can never really tell what you're going to grow up to be, but I just didn't expect that to be the job that Shirley does. I kind of thought she would be something else. Not quite sure what, but something, something really, I mean, I'm going to say like something really serious, but working in a funeral home is obviously a very serious job and I'm not knocking it, but I thought she would have been like an accountant or... I don't know, just something that wasn't working in a funeral home and especially not doing the, um, I don't know what you call it, I think it's called a, mor a mortician, but I'm not sure, I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but basically the person that does the, uh, the final, the final bit before somebody is, has their funeral where they have their makeup done and they, you know, they look as somebody would want to remember them, not as a deceased person, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But, um, yeah, it's certainly just not a job I thought that uh, Shirley would do. Um, we then kind of zap straight into seeing Nellie as an adult and she does like as soon as you go into the scene you just know that something's not right you know straight away you just get that feeling how she looks how she acts she's on edge she's jumpy and you know you can just tell that something is going on with her so and she obviously is overcome with worry for Luke we don't know why but she's like have you heard from him what's going on pick up the phone you know when she tries to ring Shirley, but obviously Shirley's like working so she's sadly busy and can't pick up the phone. Um, then it kind of flips again into another se uh, another season, sorry, another episode. Another scene, oh my god I'm getting my tongue, tie tongue tied. But yeah, we jump into the next scene where we get an overview and a really decent look at the red room door. Now this door slash hallway scene look becomes a very poignant part of the entire series. It's based on this damn door that won't open. You can't get in, no keys work, even the master key which opens every single other door in that house. And you think about how big Hill House is, and how many rooms is going to be in that, but that key does not open the red room door. So, yeah, you kind of think like, oh, why won't it open? And I do like the scene with uh, Shirley and Nell when they're kind of thinking, oh my god, this master key is going to work, and oh my god, we're going to finally find out like what's in this room. And Nellie is like, oh, maybe it's a cotton candy machine or maybe there's a pony in there. And she's so super excited. She's like, oh, my God, I just want to know what's going on. And Cheryl's like, it's not a pony. And she says it so bluntly. I'm like, damn, girl, just give your sister a little bit of something. Like, all right, okay, maybe I know ponies are a little bit, like, far-fetched. And you know it's not going to be in there because it won't be able to survive. But she's so young. Let her think that it's a magical pony that lives in there. Um, but then she kind of 
bluntly explains to Nellie why it couldn't be a pony and goes into quite vivid detail to somebody who is Nellie's age. I uh, I just think that was a bit much, but then again, it kind of shows Shirley's character. Now Shirley, like I said, I think is very blunt when she is younger and when she's older, more so when she's older, but there we go. So then we are introduced to my all-time favourite character, Theo, as an adult. So, I mean, I quite liked Theo as a child. Um, I do think her character is very, I would say, really interesting to watch and what she sees, what she feels, how her character develops. And I do think that her character probably develops the most over the course of the um, episodes, but that's just my opinion for a quick overview of like the entire series. So yeah, we notice that she wears gloves like a lot. So is, you know, why is that? Is that because she doesn't want to feel anything? Because obviously when she touches things, she immediately feels something. We don't quite know what the something is, whether she sees something or whether it's all just feel or what, but it's definitely something that I think could pretty much tell a lot more about just situations, people, um, past, present, stuff like that. I just think that I think that's a good, um, a good thing that she's got that she probably sees it more as a curse, but, um, yeah, it's good to find out what happens with her on that kind of level. Um, we also notice with Theo that she is extremely guarded. Like, she's built up her walls, she's got, like, reinforced concrete, she's probably got, like, an outer wall, all sorts of going on. She was not letting anybody in at all and she she doesn't seem too bothered by it. She seems quite happy with how she is um, or she, at least she does to start with. I'm not quite sure how it's going to go out for the rest of the season but we'll just have to see. So we, um, we get introduced to older, um, older Hugh. Sorry I've got all my notes written in front of me. Um, and um, we, <laughs> I don't know, it's very strange because obviously you have that, um, you have that scene where he's in bed, minding his own business, and then all of a sudden somebody's arms wrapped around him. You don't know who it is, and then he obviously turns over, but he seems quite confused as he turns over, and then he's like, oh, it's you. And then the lady that's in bed with him just opens her mouth and screams. And uh, it is quite terrifying, actually. Uh, especially watching when you're watching it in the dark. But, um, yeah, we realise that obviously something's going on, his phone rings and it's Nelly, and, you know, she kind of, she sounds distressed, she sounds upset, like distraught, like, she, you just, you just automatically know that something is very, very, very wrong with Nelly. She immediately says to her dad, do you remember the bent neck lady? And, the reaction that you get from Hugh is like, shit, okay, yes, I remember the bent neck lady, like, what's going on? And then Nell is like, she's back. So Hugh is immediately like, right, okay, we know how to deal with this, you don't panic, go to your brothers, go to the closest family member and just stay there, do not, do not leave just stay there and I will come and get you or I will come and meet you tomorrow and you know trying to protect his daughter because obviously you know but the sounds of the phone call this isn't the first time that Nell has mentioned the bent neck lady since she was a kid. It's obviously something that has sadly followed her through her you know into her adult life and it's obviously affected her very badly because she is terrified like absolutely petrified and you can just hear it and see it and sense it as well so um yeah so then Nellie's like oh you know I'm so sorry to bother you daddy I'm at home and you know I'm in bed and you're kind of like you're watching it and you're like no nope, you're not you're in a car where the hell are you so 
you just get that vibe that's you know the shit's gonna hit the fan and it's 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 very like oh you know you just want to jump through the screen and be give her a big hug and be like nope you're fine it's okay <laughs> but you can't and then Hugh's like okay well you know you go do that and I will see you tomorrow and you know are you okay and right so the phone call finishes and Hugh kind of just sits there and he's like oh my god and then he just immediately jumps up grabs a duffel bag starts chucking clothes in it and it's it's almost like he's talking to somebody it's like if there's somebody else they're urging him being like get out go 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 now get to Nelly do whatever you need to do just get the hell out of this room and get to your daughter we have no idea who that is but you can just feel like the urgency behind whoever is talking to him so yeah a lot happens in the first episode of the haunting of hill house i think it quite i think it really sets the bar for what happens in the majority of the season because hang on excuse me a minute i get such a dry throat whenever i um whenever i film i don't know why um but yeah like so much happens in that first episode and it really i think sets the bar for the rest of the season you kind of think oh my god like so much has happened in this one episode like my god so you kind of think, oh my God, like, you, 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 it makes you want to watch more of it. Let's just put it that way. I think when I started watching this with my mum, we kind of binged watched like a quarter of the season one after the other. Like we, we weren't planning on it. Um, we just sat down and we were just like one after the other after the other. And then I had to kind of get home. So um, I headed home and then was like, I need to find out what happened so I ended up finishing watching it in the dark so yeah but um it definitely makes you want to watch more of it it makes you want to invest yourself in it even after just the few scenes that I've even spoken about so then we get to see a part or partial view of what happens on the night the last night that they are all in Hill House and when they have to leave you know, the kids are very confused, very upset. They've just been kind of whipped from their beds by their dad. They have no idea what's going on. And it's scary, you know, if you, you even in this sort of like, you know, day and age, but it, you know, if you take a young child out of his bed in the middle of the night and be like, you have to get in the car, we have to get in the car, we have to leave, we have to leave, oh my God. They obviously want answers. Their dad is so busy trying to get them out of the house safely that he can't explain what the hell's going on. It's a very upsetting and quite um you kind of think that the kids will definitely need therapy after that even if nothing actually else happened so yeah uh the kids are obviously very upset the fact that they've left their mum they don't understand why and they don't understand why their dad is just like no it's fine you know that's not mummy we're just we're going and that's it like there's no you guys wait here i'll go back and get your mum you know it's just very get the hell out of there is very poignantly put in uh in that episode i think or in that scene let's put it that way so in a lot of horror films uh, that i've watched especially where there is like a possession or a ghost or some kind of spiritual disturbance normally at it's either midnight or um sort of between 12 and 3 I would say is like the times that you've seen on other films where spooky stuff normally always happens between that time like I don't know why I don't know whether maybe um you know the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest at that time or whatever but it just seems to be the strongest time that you see in films where stuff happens so yeah so at 3.03 a.m all the kids Every single one of them bolt upright in bed, hand to their neck, and Shirley says, Nellie's in the red room. So for Shirley, speaking, like talking in her sleep and probably maybe getting up quite quickly and being like, oh my god, and then falling back asleep falling back asleep again, isn't probably much of a shock to her or to her husband. He probably is quite used to it, so he probably didn't doesn't think anything of it. He probably just thinks, oh, she's talking in her sleep, whatever. 
Um, but yeah, so um, you, again, nothing really happens with that. You kind of just think, oh, okay, what, what's going on there? Um, we then find out that Shirley is not a happy bunny about Stephen's book. Um, she wasn't happy that he took the, their family story and created it into a book and also um, would get money from it. Now, he, Stephen's kind of like trying to defend himself being like, well, I want, sorry, I want to start my own family. I want to do things more with my life and the money that I will get from this book will enable me to do that. And Shirley's like, no, it's blood money. We're not doing it. Nobody's going to take it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, she's very, very, you know, feels so strongly about this. Um, I'm not too sure how everyone else feels about the book and if they're going to get money from it. Um, like, we don't know how they feel about it at that time. Um, we, you know, you then skip to another scene where it goes back to when Hugh is with his lawyer I think and the lawyer is basically telling him that you know the kids have to take the stand to tell their version of what happened but Hugh is like hell no my kids do not take the stand um we you know they can take chunks out of me all they like but they just leave the kids out of it so Again, he's trying to do his protective father bit, and you kind of you do understand that you do get that. But then the lawyer's like, "Yeah, but sell the house. Why aren't you selling the house? Why are you keeping the uh, the Dudleys on? You need the money. Sell the house." And Hugh again, the the house stays. You tell me every single day that those doors are still locked and that nobody is in that house or anywhere near it apart from the Dudleys. The Dudleys stay on. So at this precise moment in time, we have absolutely no idea why he feels so passionately and so strongly about the fact that the house stays in his name and like he is still the owner of it. You don't get it, you kind of think, well, Obviously something really bad's happened here, so why don't you just want to get rid of it? Why do you want to keep it in the family and everything else? But again, we're probably going to find that out later on in another episode. Um, the, um, the other thing that I noticed as well, like talking about the Dudleys, is especially Mrs Dudley, she dresses um, very differently to what I would say most people in that time dressed, like even her husband's a little bit more modern, um, especially when she's in Hill House, like obviously you don't see her when she's not in Hill House, but when she's in Hill House she dresses very, what I would say would be very like Victorian, you know, very long dresses, ruffled style, lacy, um, material, um, her hair is always up and very pristine, um, you know, but maybe it's just because she likes that era of clothing or whether it's just the fact that she just is very, um, not well groomed, but very, you know, she likes, she takes care of her appearance, let's put it that way, um, so, and obviously she takes her job as um, I think they're like the caretakers of the house. Um, she, she obviously takes her job very, very seriously because she's very strict and very stern and she comes across like very scary and very unapproachable and um, a little bit like Theo in the sense that she's obviously very guarded. Like so she knows something but she's not letting on what it is but she's very, yeah, there's just something going on. There's more to her than what you kind of think. Well, certainly that's what the vibe I got anyway. So, um, yeah, um, the other thing that I noticed as well about this, that scene, not with uh, Mrs Dudley, but the scene that follows where uh, Olivia's trying to find Luke 
And Stephen's like, why don't you try the treehouse? And Olivia's like, oh, very funny, mister. I didn't get that. And I was kind of sat there like, well, maybe he's in the treehouse. Like, you know, kids love treehouses. And obviously, you know, they're very young at this time still. So that would be the most perfect place for um, Luke to be. Um, so I was like, okay, fine, fair enough. And I remember when I very first watched The Haunting of Hell House, I didn't get that at all. Didn't get it at all. And it was only when I watched it for the second time um, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And it is so funny. I think with, with, with this series, you really have to watch it very, very carefully without interruptions, without um, you getting kind of sidetracked or anything else. No, like, no disappearing off to get coffee, tea, drinks, snacks whilst it's still playing. You have to pause it because if you miss a tiny little thing, you kind of get a bit lost and you don't quite get what's going on. Um, so, yeah. Then we are introduced to adult Luke. So obviously Luke is an addict and um, he, you do find out earlier on, you don't see Luke, but you hear that he got his 90 day chip, which is amazing. It's such a good um, progression and like um, an amazing uh, milestone. That's the word I'm trying to think of, milestone to get to for any, you know, any addict, 90 days, like, Wow, that's for any addict that must be such a, a proud moment for them um so yeah and I do think that Luke plays the addict side of his character extremely well and uh top points for um I think it's Oliver Jackson Cohen who plays Luke as an adult um I think him him I think he uh portrays that very very well um, so, yeah, um, obviously Luke has broken into Stephen's house. We don't know why, but Stephen asks Luke if he's cold. So I'm assuming that, uh, is a sign of, like, withdrawal. So when Luke says yes, he kind of gives Stephen the answer that he already expects Luke to say. So he's like, oh, you're using again, and that's why you've stolen stuff from my house, because you want to set it on for money so you can get a fix. You know, well done, Luke. You, you know, you make it to your, your 90 day milestone, and then you go and throw it all away type of thing. Like he just immediately f jumps on that bandwagon. And I guess in some respects, I mean, I have, I have no idea what any family feels when they have a family member who is an addict but it must be hard to continuously try and back somebody when they keep falling into that habit it must be really 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 hard and I'm not in any way shape or form saying I understand how somebody feels but going off the characters you kind of get a tiny 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 glimpse of that feeling so um yeah so that's that's not really very good. Um, so yeah, um, then, you know, Steve um, obviously just gives Luke money. He's like, look, just here, have this money. I'll have my stuff back. Don't like ask me for anything again. So then Steve goes upstairs flips open, you know, the front door, which <laughs> Luke's obviously kicked in, um, and he's like, for Christ's sake, you know, it's just, he's just very, very frustrated, he's not in the mood whatsoever to deal with anybody else's shit, basically, um, so he goes into his apartment, flicks on the light, goes into his lounge, and Nelly is stood there in the corner, now, when I first saw this, I was so happy. I was like, yes, she listened to her dad. She went to Steve's, you know, she she did what she was told to do. Everything's gonna be okay for this moment and this episode and whatever happens, happens in a later episode. So, yeah, but as the scene progresses, you learn that uh, it's not all good. 
Steve rings his dad, or, sorry, no, his dad rings Steve to tell him extremely, extremely bad news. But Steve doesn't want to know immediately. He's like, yeah, fine, don't worry about it, dad. Nelly is here, Lee must have told her, yada, yada, yada. And the, the line is very um, distorted, very crackly, very, um, like, the signal keeps dipping in and out. And he's like, dad, I can't hear you, dad, I can't hear you. And um, you hear Hugh be like, Nelly went to the house, she's dead. And Steve's like, no, that can't be right. She's in my living room. And you can, in the scene, it's so eerie because you can see Nelly in the background. And then as he goes to turn around, she's there. She's like smack bang behind him. And she, obviously you can tell that like she is a ghost because her, like her skin starts going very dark and very like, um, I can't think of what the word is but you can just tell that she's a ghost and then she just opens her mouth and just screams almost and it's just it's horrifying it really is and then obviously that causes Stephen to kind of fall back and then you have that moment where it's just he's just on the floor completely and utterly in shock his dad has just told him his sister's dead but he has just seen her or what he thinks to be her um, in his apartment. And it's very, again, it's a very well played um, scene because Hugh is still on the phone. He's like, Stephen, Steve, hello, Stephen, Stephen, because he can't get hold of him and obviously he needs to. So it's a very, um, Again, for that one whole season, oh, oh my god, Jade, for that one whole episode, sorry, a lot happens in it. You go from this family that has moved into this house to suddenly a family that is just so far apart from each other and so broken and you kind of get introduced to the, each individual characters as adults and you, you just really, even from that first episode, you are very, very emotionally invested in the characters. Uh, I certainly was anyway. Um, and I, I was very, very um, excited to get to episode two. So due to the fact that this um, video is now running on to nearly half or it's gone just over half an hour I'm gonna cut this here and I'm gonna make another episode uh, oh, sorry I'm gonna do another video straight after this for episode two and three I was gonna try and see if I could get three episodes into one video but it would be way too long and um not really gonna happen so yeah um I hope you all enjoyed this video um and you know just leave a comment in the in the comments below let me know what you think and uh, I will see you all in episode two bye